All right, did you know you can play offense and defense at the same time? That sounds kind of crazy. In any sport, you know, the team that has the ball, they're on offense. They're not playing defense, but it reminds me of the Heisman pose, you know, where the Heisman pose where the guy's got the ball and he's holding it and he's sticking his arm out like that. He's kind of defense. It's like a stiff arm, right? So it's basically how do you hold onto the ball as well as kind of defending against other folks. So this exists in investing and it's really relevant for 2024. The reason why is because people are afraid. You know, maybe you've had a multifamily deal that's gone bad, a capital call, something that's challenged. So there's this idea of protecting what you have and playing defense. And it's also an incredible time. There's some amazing opportunities that are going on right now. And I'm gonna go over this in three easy steps. And at the very end, I'm gonna share uh, what my favorite offense or offensive strategy is for today. So let's jump in. All right, so welcome. Uh, my name is Bronson Hill. I'm the CEO of Bronson Equity. We do things like multifamily deals, car wash, oil and gas, senior housing, all kinds of different stuff, businesses. And we help investors get passive returns for uh, without taking up more of their time. Uh, this, this is just an educational video, get your own investment advice. So the first thing I wanna say about uh, really creating an offense and defensive strategy is that um, you know it, it really is a balancing act, right? If you're too focused on only, hey, I'm just gonna just play defense, I'm just gonna save money, whatever, you're really gonna be locked in either getting no returns, low returns, you're just gonna sit and just have, and that's why people take government jobs or do something that, if you work a government job, no offense, but a lot of times some of those jobs don't pay great, but they have all these great benefits and there's this idea of security. Um, and if you're only all offense, you can basically have a lot of losses and you're not really looking at protecting what you have. Investing really involves two things in my opinion. I'm not the person who came up with this. I don't remember who it was, but the idea of capital preservation, right? Preserving the money that you have. That's number one. And Buffett says this, he says, if anything you do in your investing, if you just don't lose money, you'll do just fine, right? So, so it's basically preserving the capital you have. And then the second thing is, is capital growth, right? So preservation first, then growing capital. So for a lot of us, once we've had some hits or we've taken some shots or maybe, you know, the investment is not just a straight up line to the right. It's usually there's kind of some ups and downs. So we've experienced some of those downs lately. Maybe you've experienced some of those downs as well. So really, what do you do to protect yourself? What are the things that you do? So let's talk about the 2023 and 24 uh, struggles and the wealth impact is that maybe you're feeling less wealthy right now, right? If you've seen a loss, if you've seen some challenges, maybe uh, you're a business owner and you got the PPP and you've had, you know, you realize there was just money more available and now it's not. Now we're just seeing prices go up for everything and maybe you had to lay people off and it's difficult, right? So there's this idea of kind of holding back and preserving capital is good. It's important that your asset protection is in place so that if you get sued or something happens, you know, your investments are structured correctly. That's a very important uh, strategy. Also, you know, basically just, you know, making sure that you're keeping an eye on your investments, especially if you have active control over it. If you're passive, just that you're asking questions, you're contributing in ways that you can. Those are all very, very helpful. And then, you know, Warren Buffett talks about this though too. It's not just only playing defense. It's not just only holding back. It's also, um, you know, being able to have a result in your temperament, right? He says the number one trait to be a great investor is having a good temperament. And what that means, you see that, right? We've done other videos on this too, that most people will sell when really prices have come down and actually you should be buying more, right? If you look back, so, but, but that's generally the panic kind of thing that we do, the fear and greed. And there's ways that we can take advantage of doing, of, of actually taking advantage of when other people are afraid to actually double down. And when things are really hot, that's the time we should actually be making our way to the exit and not be uh, buying more, which is people typically will do the opposite there. So again, your temperament is really important. So it is important that while even some things have come down or there is some challenge there, there are some great deals that are becoming available in real estate, in businesses and different types of things. And I'm gonna get into it here in a little bit, uh, but it's important to protect what you have and keep your eyes open, look for new opportunities. We're seeing some opportunities now that we have not seen before as far as pricing, in the new development area, other things that I'm really, really excited about for 2024 because there's some incredible opportunities that are here. So the, the third thing really is playing smart and you know the caution and the opportunity. So we talked about uh, defense, you know, having some diversification is helpful. Warren Buffett says, you don't want wide diversification unless you don't know what you're doing. And then wide diversification just kind of makes very, very mediocre in your performance, but having some diversification. So if you have, you know, 50% of your wealth in multifamily, maybe it's time to diversify and put in other types of real estate or even non-real estate type assets or businesses or things that will give you some diversification. So if it doesn't go well in one area, it will go well in another. Uh, one investment that I like 
that we do is an ATM machine fund. Uh, the operator over 12 years of operation has been super solid on the payments. It's been great, right? So being in something that's not related, there's no debt involved with this deal. There's a lot of tax benefits. So, and it just, it pays monthly, right? So that kind of investment is something that I really like because it's very different than some of the other more appreciation type of investment. So having some diversity is good. And then monitor alerts, you know, monitor like what's happening in specific areas. If you should invest in a certain area or invest more, or, or even, you know, if you have a chance to sell or get a distribution or move on, you can. And just, just pay attention to those things, right? And look at these, these macro trends that are happening. We've talked about this before, the senior housing trend or seniors in general, healthcare, any of that stuff, is there's this huge, uh, you know, an amount of boomers that are aging, and you know they're, they're gonna need a lot more healthcare, they're gonna need a lot more senior housing, a lot more these types of things that are related to seniors. So that's something over the next five, 10 years, especially if you look at the curve, it's just it's a huge curve where it's just this big bump of more services and uh, desire for uh, healthcare and things like that over the next 10 years, just, just necessary. Um, so then those are uh, some offensive things you can do. And then also, um, <clears throat> like I mentioned, ATMs, car washes, oil and gas, other types of deals, just being open to other types of opportunities. And that's the playing offense. You know, maybe you're not, maybe you don't even have money to invest right now. You, all your money's deployed, but paying attention to other sectors. You know, if I had money, I would do this, or these are the things I would look into. I think it's important every week to be looking at deals. You know, if you're not on our investment club list or our deal list, um, there's other groups like us out there. And I imagine, I hope you get on 10 or 15 of these, right? So you're getting a constant flow of deals. You're able to evaluate them based on what your goals are, define what your goals are. And that's your offense, right? That's your strategy. That's your playbook, right? You have this football playbook and you're playing to win, right? Uh, I had this revelation in my Spartan races recently. I had a race and I didn't finish as well as I wanted. I was hoping to finish top three or top five. I finished ninth and I was kind of embarrassed and I felt, man, I'm like, why am I doing this? But then I thought, you know, I've been, I've been really training to finish third rather than finishing first. And so I realized if I wanna, if I wanna get better, I've gotta really do what a first place type finisher would do. So I had a shift in mindset. So same like this with your investing, have a first place mindset. What is your, what is your dream goal? What do you wanna do? And what is it gonna to take to get there? And then start taking shots for that. So highly encourage that. Um, so have an approach this tactical and then just pay attention to the evolving landscape. So I do wanna share, I promised you that I'd give you my top business idea or my top investment idea. And what I love, uh, you know, the best offensive strategy right now is buying businesses. Um, now, I haven't bought a specific business. We bought real estate, we bought other businesses, we've been involved in car wash and other things like that. But buying a business in 2024, I want to buy a business. I want to be involved with businesses. There's ways you do it. It's a little more active, actually much more active in the beginning. Um, there's ways you can become more passive. Or there are even groups that do uh, business uh, investing type funds or private equity type of funds. There's big ones like BlackRock and other ones. There's ones that are smaller. I generally like the smaller ones better because I feel like you get it, but they usually will work with smaller businesses or things like that. So really, really exciting. So check that out. I um, wanted to share this quote with you. He says, uh, this is Jack Dempsey, says the best defense is a good offense, right? So a lot of times we're so stuck in being defensive and I've got to defend, I've got to protect, whatever. And just, you know, if you can just continue to get out there and invest and learn, every time you learn, every time you go for it, you're gonna get better and better and better. You're gonna learn, okay, well, this operator or this type of deal or this asset, I wasn't a big fan of, but this one I love, right? And I've found that in a lot of things that we're doing. So, uh, and I wanted to share this with you too. I talked about paying attention. My good friend, Ken McElroy, wrote the forward to my book, Fire Yourself, which is on the shelf behind me here. Um, he, we did a market report uh, together. Uh, he basically kind of gave an update on what's happening and we did this great interview. So you can check that out up here. Uh, had a lot of great feedback on it. And so if you haven't joined our investment club, please do. Uh, you'll hear about our awesome upcoming deals and stuff that, you know, beyond multifamily oil and gas, ATMs and car washes, we've got, you know, senior housing, we've got medical office buildings, we've got debt funds, we've got all kinds of new stuff that I can't even talk about yet that's coming out. So check it out. Thank you for being on this video. Love to hear a comment from you and uh, please reach out if we have not connected, uh, bronzepenequity.com and join our club. Look forward to seeing you on the next episode or the next video, I should say.